That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Top Gun Maverick, uh, which Paramount is releasing after many, many delays, uh, May 27th, 2022, uh, after a uh, premiere at the 2022 Cannes Film Festival. Who's the director? It's the fourth film directed by Joseph Kosinski, uh, who is notable for doing the Tron reboot Ooh. in 2010. Uh, he directed Tom Cruise in Oblivion, uh, co-starring Morgan Freeman, uh, and also directed a film called Only the Brave about, uh, I feel like, kind of similar territory about a group of firefighters. Did you like this movie? I did, and it's surprising because uh, I think it's a lot of fun and a lot better than the 1986 original directed by Tony Scott. We talked about Top Gun in our last podcast. I did not care. That was the first time I saw it was, what, a week ago? Yeah. I did not care for I haven't that seen it since I was a kid, and I think I forgot how little kind of... That story is so damn flimsy. Dramatic tension there is in that movie. And the relationship between Tom Cruise and Kelly McGillis, like, they have no chemistry. Yeah. It's and then just... she's gone for, like, the final third... It's very tactile. After she tells him she's fallen for him, and it's like, how, girl? Y'all just share glances. I don't understand what's happening. Well, they had a they had a wonderful song to uh, <laughs> exist in. Okay, the basic story of this movie, Tom Cruise is back, because we find out that there's some entity that has some unsanctioned uranium that they're going to use for nefarious reasons. So the military needs to destroy it. And in order to do so, they need to get planes under the radar to like blow that shit up so here's where the top gun come in the the best of the best the one percent the elite they need a group of men people to uh fly these older planes like the f 18 18s that were in the movie from 36 years ago that can go under the radar to shoot up this uranium so tom cruise is the one who's going to train them he does they complete the mission successfully the end so, some important plot points. So, we find out Tom Cruise's character is a captain. Yeah, so if you remember the end of Top Gun, he's told he can, you know, because of saving Valk Iceman and that, that final that mission that is, also feels very tacked on, that he's going to be able to do whatever he wants uh, in the Navy, and he wants to be a Top Gun instructor. And it turns out he only did that for two months. So, he's a captain, which is surprising, because after all this time, one would think that he'd have a higher ranking. The reason he doesn't is because he keeps fucking up. And not following the rules. So then you think, well, why isn't he discharged? Because in the previous film, he saved Val Kilmer's ass. And now Val Kilmer is like a high-ranking person. I think he's like in charge of the U.S. Pacific Fleet. So Val Kilmer's character has been pulling strings to keep Tom Cruise from getting in trouble. Cronyism. And, and it's Val Kilmer's character who also plucks him for this mission. So when Which, Tom which it happens right at a moment where he's about to be canned again. So Tom Cruise gets to the little base where this mission is going to be uh, run and John Hamm's character is in charge. And John Hamm's character doesn't like Tom Cruise, but he is outranked by Val Kilmer, so he has to do what he says. His name is Cyclone. But Val Kilmer dies, so now John Hamm is in charge. So he gives Tom Cruise the boot. But the mission they have to execute is like impossible because they have to fly like at the angles they have to fly and the g forces and, and then the, the, and the time and then the have, time and then the enemy planes are going to detect them to shoot exactly at a certain moment two times and so it's like an impossible mission so after would tom, you say it's a mission impossible it's a mission impossible so after john ham tells tom cruise kick rocks tom cruise takes a plane and demonstrates that not only can he execute this maneuver successfully but he did it in less time than was necessary. So, of course, John Hamm is like, well, I guess we got to let him fly. So you go ahead and pick who you want to ride with you. Well, one of the people he chooses is a character named Rooster. Played by Miles Teller. And Rooster is the son of Goose. <laughs> Anthony <laughs> and Edwards. If, and if we remember Goose from the first film, that was Tom Cruise's best friend who died in like an exercise. Mm -hmm. So, and that, of, of course, upset Tom Cruise so much in the first film that he thought about quitting. Also, Rooster's real name is Bradley Bradshaw. Okay, so what's important about Rooster, besides that it's the son of Goose, Goose, Tom Cruise's old best friend, is that Tom Cruise's character had pulled... He messed with Rooster's files at he the request of Rooster's mom to prevent him from joining Top Gun because they didn't want what happened to Rooster's dad to ha happen to him. But ultimately, he does end up flying. 
um, the mission doesn't go as smooth as I said because when Tom Cruise and his little people fly down there, Tom Cruise gets shot down. And then Rooster's all goofy. At, well, he gets shot down trying to protect Rooster. And instead of Rooster flying off to safety, he tries to help Tom Cruise. But then he gets uh, grounded. So now these two are in enemy territory. And it's a third character named Hangman. Mm -hmm. Played by Glenn Powell. Who saves them. Be they, they are able to... Um, Maverick and Rooster are able to get into an even older model plane, an F-14. And then they, again, then there's... It's like a double climax because then they have to uh, navigate uh, enemy fighter jets and hangman saves them and then of course tom cruise has to be in a relationship with a woman in every movie yeah, so in so this one he's in a relationship with jennifer connelly playing penny uh it's kind of like the original uh, indiana jones series where it's like oh no mention of the other woman that you were in love with uh charlie kelly mcgillis is totally gone i don't think she even is she gets still alive mention. yes oh i don't know her <laughs> so i don't it's a lesbian oh well, I mean, I don't know all gay people, but what is she working? Yes. What was the last thing she was in? The last thing I saw was Stakeland. What year was that? 2010. But oh. you saw that with me. Anyway, uh, Jennifer Connelly is playing Penny, who, through you know some uh, sparring dialogue, now owns a bar, and she needs more employees considering the volume of people in there in this bar, uh, called The Hard Deck, uh, which of course is the uh, zone you can't fly under close to the earth with those planes that's a plot point in this as well uh and she runs this bar that's about three years ago they had a previous uh, relationship she has a teenage daughter with somebody else uh, and he's kind of coming back into her life and of course much like the romance in top gun it's just like oh yeah they're like in love uh and of course it ends with a requisite song here sung by lady gaga called hold my hand which sails us off into the credits the film opens with uh, danger zone it it certainly does and there are tinklings of the the films because the best part of the other film is the soundtrack but lady gaga's hold my hand is nowhere near nowhere near berlin's take my breath away nowhere near the lead singer of berlin was performing near our house the other day is that correct you're talking about ann wilson of hearts oh <laughs> is who i was talking God. about i don't know who you were thinking when i said i was that. thinking of ann wilson <laughs> Anyhow, um, this... you really liked the final scene where they actually have to go blow up the uranium. Yeah, I think that's very well done. It this is transportive in a way that the other film I think couldn't be because there's just no dramatic tension. Uh, and I like uh, it was you know in the other films very white. Uh, so here we have uh, women and black people that are all part of the mix. So that's always nice to see. Uh, we also have one of uh, Tom Cruise's favorite screenwriters and directors as uh, one of the scribes, Christopher McQuarrie, who is a director. I, I really like his *The Way of the Gun*, but he's directed Sean, uh, Tom Cruise five times. Uh, the last like four *Mission Impossible*s, including the two that are coming out, parts one and two, and uh, the first *Jack Reacher*. You said very white, which made me think of Barry White, which makes me want to give a shout out to his little girl group, Love Unlimited. They have a song called I Can't Let Him Down that I really like. Okay, that's great. I just want to share that. Uh, speaking of that, though, <laughs> uh, the four people that are... Because there, there are three uh, F-18s that are being flown into this mission, being led by Tom Cruise with his wingman, who is Rooster. There's also some rivalry between... Uh, Rooster and Glenn Powell's character Hangman, who's called Hangman because he leaves people hanging, as in they would probably die out there. Uh, but there's Phoenix, played by Monica Barbaro, uh, Payback, played by Jay Ellis of Insecure, uh, Bob, played by Lewis Pullman, uh, who of course is Bill Pullman's son, who we reviewed in Them That Follow. That's right. And Fanboy, played by Danny Ramirez, who was just one of the baddies in that film No Exit. Are which, there shower scenes? No, not that I... Is there I, any nudity? Not that, no. How does Tom Cruise look? He looks fine. You know, he's had some filler, I think, put in his Does his hair look face. colored? Yeah. Okay, and it oh, it, it is a nice um, straddling of uh, nostalgic cheese and kind of serious dramatic heft uh, in a studio film, at least. Uh it, oh, and Ed Harris is an admiral that doesn't like him in the beginning because it opens with he's somewhere in the Mojave Desert in a uh, Navy hangar and he's going to this Mach 9 testing of this new uh, 
this new plane uh, and he shows up and they're like, Admiral so-and-so has shut this down because, you know, we're getting into an area where we don't really need pilots anymore. Uh, and he's, by the way, he thinks that what you're already doing is obsolete because we, he wants these things to fly at Mach 10 speed, not Mach 9, which was, the, which was what the test was for today. And Tom Cruise is like, well, he's not on base yet, so I'm going to take this thing up. And of course, pushes it past Mach 10 to like 10 and a half, and the, the, the engine shut down and he crashes. <laughs> and just about when he thinks that, you know, all is lost, Ed Harris is like, well, you know, fortuitously, I received this call for you to head up this Top Gun mission, which basically feels like RuPaul's All-Stars Season 7. <laughs> you told that long story and skipped the most interesting part of it, which is he walks, after he crashes, doesn't he walk into the bar and his hair's all He walks crazy? into a diner, <laughs> which is also heavily populated for, I don't know where it is, and uh, looking like some crazy spaceman, is, he asks, where am I? And some little kid goes, Earth. Do you have anything else? <sighs> no, I will say I had very low <laughs> expectations uh, for this film based on rewatching the original. And I will say that it is enjoyable. And for the two hours and 11 minutes that it is, I, uh, it, it flies by. What would you give it? <laughs> I'd give it three. Listen to our podcast. Bye. <laughs>